Hi, I'm Robin Shooter and I'm the founder of Empower Total Health. And what I want to talk to you about today is trust. Specifically trust in the context of the doctor-patient relationship. If you're like most people, when you go and see the doctor because you have some kind of health concern, the reality is you're unlikely to know as much about, about how your body works as your doctor does or what your symptoms mean how they should be treated. So you place your trust in your doctor to diagnose you properly and prescribe an appropriate course of treatment that's going to offer you the maximum benefit and the minimum harm. So in the light of this, a systematic review, which means looking at multiple papers that have been published and then analysing the results. It was published in the March 16, uh, 2017 edition of JAMA Internal Medicine. That's the Journal of the American Medical Association, one of the top half dozen medical journals in the world. It makes for rather worrying reading because, as it turns out, clinicians are not actually that good at assessing either the risks or the benefits of medical treatment. This review was conducted by researchers at Bond University on the Gold Coast here in Australia, and they examined 48 studies, and there was a total of 13,000 clinicians who were involved in, 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 this, in this review. Uh, in the studies that were reviewed, I'm sorry. So out of those 48 studies, there were 20 that focused on treatment, 20 on medical imaging, so things like x-rays and MRIs and CT scans, and eight that focused on screening, things like mammograms and bone density scans and so forth. When it came to assessing expectation of the benefit from treatment, so the likelihood that the patient would be better off for having the treatment or the screening or the investigation. Doctors provided a correct estimation for only three out of 28 outcomes, which is a fairly low strike rate. They overestimated the likelihood that patients would benefit from treatment in 32% of cases, and they underestimated the potential benefit of treatment in 9% of cases. Their strike rate for expectations of harm wasn't really any better. So in nine out of 69 outcomes, doctors correctly estimated the risk of, of treatment harming a patient. In this case, they were far more likely to underestimate harm, that was 34% of outcomes, than they were to overestimate it, that was only 5% of outcomes. What does all this mean? What it means is the average doctor is prescribing treatments that he or, she, he or she thinks are going to be more beneficial to you and less harmful to you than the research shows that they actually are. Now, if the potential harms were quite minor, such as a mild skin rash or one episode of diarrhea or a bit of a headache, you might be prepared to put up with them if you're likely to benefit greatly from the treatment. But when the potential benefits are small, any risk of harm is actually a really big deal. So take a look at this table. This is from an article called Are Preventative Drugs Preventive Enough? The Study of Patients' Expectations of Benefit from Preventive Drugs. And, take, and pay particular attention to the numbers in this far right-hand column. Now, what all of this means is that if you haven't yet had a heart attack or other coronary event, but you have very, very high cholesterol, over 7 millimoles per litre, taking a statin drug, in this particular case it was Pravacol, will reduce your risk of having a coronary event by 2.3% and your risk of dying by 0.09%. Yeah, you heard that right. There's less than a 1% chance that the drug will keep you alive any longer than if you just kept going about your business with the ridiculously high cholesterol level. What if you've already had a heart attack? Well, in this case, taking the statin will reduce your risk of dying by 3.1% and your risk of having another heart attack by 2.9%. How enthusiastic do you feel about taking this drug now? It doesn't really fire me up, especially when compared to the results gained by Dr. Cordell Esselstyn, whose dietary program reduced the risk of a major cardiac event by over 60%. Now, as the authors of, of this article that I got the table from point out, even high-risk patients, so in this case, that's patients who have just had a heart attack, even high-risk patients have less than a 5% chance of benefiting from a cardioprotective drug taken for five years. 95% of patients will take the drug for five years without benefit. These statistics are seldom shared with patients. Now, based on the Bond University study that I started with, doctors aren't sharing these statistics because they're evil people who want to harm their patients. They're not sharing them because they don't know them themselves. 
doctors are often too busy to read medical journals. They lack the training to read studies critically and understand statistics prevented, presented in these studies, even, even if they did read them. Most doctors rely pretty heavily on pharmaceutical company representatives to get their information about new drugs. And this information does influence their prescribing behaviour, even though only 9% of them agree that, that the information they get from, from pharma reps is very accurate. When they do their own research, roughly 50% of doctors use Wikipedia as their primary source of health information. My kids, both of them in high school now, but even when my youngest one was in primary school, I mean, she was told, you're not allowed to cite Wikipedia as an information source when you're submitting an assignment. If doctors rely on clinical practice guidelines for their prescribing decisions, they're probably not aware that the people serving on these committees that write the guidelines are riddled with conflicts of interest, such as working for drug companies and receiving industry funding for their, for their research. As, the, as this article, Conflict of Interest in Seminal Hepatitis C Virus and Cholesterol Management Guidelines, which was published in the same edition of JAMA Internal Medicine, revealed, as the researchers concluded, this was in the Bond University study, clinicians rarely had ac accurate expectations of benefits or harms with inaccuracies in both directions. However, clinicians more often underestimated rather than overestimated harms and overestimated rather than underestimated benefits. So it's like the rose-colored glasses view of how likely a treatment or procedure was to benefit the patient. Inaccurate perceptions about the benefits and harms of interventions are likely to result in suboptimal clinical management choices. In other words, you're not getting the best treatment from a doctor who isn't able to accurately assess the risk of, of harms and benefits. So where does this leave you, the patient? Well, your first priority really ought to be learning how to take care of yourself properly to reduce your need to engage with the medical system in the first place. Healthy people don't need doctors, barring accidents, of course. After that, you need to learn how to assess your options for investigation and treatment in case you ever do get sick. My Empower Ed program is all about becoming an informed healthcare consumer by learning how to critically analyse health and nutrition information, to ask for the right test when you do go to your doctor, and to know how to interpret the results, and to avoid useless screening tests and make the most of those that are useful, to understand the risks and benefits of medical treatments and know how to find the right sources to assess those risks and benefits if your doctor doesn't know how to do that, and to choose the right medical and health professionals to put on your care team. The Empower Ed program includes monthly in-depth webinars covering topics like cancer screening and bone mineral density assessment and how to read your own blood tests. And your first month of membership is absolutely free, so it's totally risk-free. There's a link that you can follow uh, in the, the notes under this video that will take you to the Empower Ed membership page where you can learn all about the benefits of membership and sign up for your free trial. And I really hope that you found uh, this presentation useful. Um, I'd love it if you would write a comment below and like it, share it with your friends. And I hope to see you in the Empower Ed membership program. Bye for now.